going on. Thank you so much. Pay like a million dollars. Shout out to TMZ. Are you up? Let me check out that rig. TMZ stands for the Mayweather Zone. How'd you find me, bro? I got my disguise on. I love my TMZ family. My sports <laughs> Welcome to TMZ Sports, Mojo Mutati and Edward Lewis in hot today while Michael Babcock is out. And ladies and gentlemen, we are starting this show with a very, very big one uh, with a police hunt for a current NFL Super Bowl champion. Edward, you got the details. What's up? Yeah, reportedly cops are on the hunt for Rasheed Rice after one of his cars uh, was uh involved in a car crash in Dallas on Saturday. So so here's the deal. At around 6.25 p.m. on an expressway in Dallas, Texas, uh, two cars, a Corvette and a Lamborghini, were seen speeding in the left-hand lane before they lost control and crashed. You could see here in the dash cam video of a, of a witness that it was crazy. Uh, six cars ended up being involved. Thankfully, only minor injuries. But cops are saying that the occupants of both the Lambo and the Corvette left the scene. Cops are not identifying anything about Rasheed Rice. They haven't said they they are accusing him of anything, but according to Dallas Morning News, one of these vehicles involved uh, uh, was registered uh, to Rasheed Rice. Uh, we don't know which one. We don't know if he was driving it. We, we don't we don't know where if he was there or who was there or what. Uh, but we do have images of 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 the of the passengers of both cars leaving the scene. It's it's very very unclear if one is Rasheed Rice, one might be Rasheed Rice. It's it's so hard to say. Uh, but that's where everything stands uh, right now. Uh, I will say that the Chiefs finally addressed this incident on Monday morning. Uh, and Mark Donovan said basically they're still gathering the facts and, and he had this to say he said in all of these situations You have to wait for all of the facts. We don't have all of the facts We will get to the bottom of it and we will act accordingly. So everybody's looking into this Hey, well, I, I love what Chiefs President Mark Donovan had to say here. I mean, yes, I Never have liked when when teams when presidents go out there and they make these preliminary comments before they have all the facts. It's just better to wait and know what you're talking about before you say anything at all. This is such an unusual case. A lot going on here. Very suspicious that we haven't heard anything from Rasheed or anyone on his team. I mean, hey, maybe they're doing just that. They're going out there and trying to figure out all the facts, too. I mean, if Rasheed was in the car, they're probably preparing their defense. If he wasn't in the car and someone, you know, stole his car, took his car, borrowed his car, whatever the situation is, Obviously, there's a lot of conversations that need to be had before you put a statement out into the world because that statement could possibly come back to bite you. You know, there could be liability on his end, even if he wasn't driving the car, depending on how this thing went down. But I mean, my goodness, I'm looking at this clip and I mean, these two probably were racing, right? I mean, that's what it looks like. It they were racing on the road and yes. ran into a little congestion and spun out. Um you know, the fact that both of these cars hit the innocent driver at the same time from both sides, you know, it almost seemed like it was a blessing in a way because it uh, stopped the momentum of that vehicle without allowing it an opportunity to, to flip or roll over or, you know, maybe hit even more cars. But thank goodness none of these cars flipped that there were no further injuries because those guys were moving this situation could be a lot worse. I can't imagine how scary it was for any of these people that were driving, but um, you know, actually earlier today on TMZ Live, Harvey and Charles got to sit down with one of the drivers in one of those automobiles, a woman named Kayla. Uh, check out what she had to say about this. Why don't you just kind of paint the picture of what happened? You're driving along. Saturday afternoon, van. driving along. Yeah, I'm just, you know, driving from the zoo. I'm heading to pick up my um, son from his mentor. And, you know, normally I try to, like, drive and look, you know, at my windows because you got to look for everybody because everybody can't drive. But I guess this time I wasn't looking or paying attention to my surroundings. And next thing you know, I just, boom, like, I got hit on the left side. And I'm just, like, start screwing in the street. I'm like, wait, like, what is going on? So um, they flew past me. Like, if you can see in the video, like, the white car, the van, all of them flew in, flew in front of me. So I had to blindly, like, drive on the left side of the highway to get out in the middle of the street. Um, and then once I kind of got out, um, I grabbed my son, he's screaming, and then I happened to look. And happens, I'm looking at my uh, mirror, that's when I seen, like, white shirt pulling 
um, somebody out of the Corvette. I'm not sure who was being pulled. I can't tell you who was being pulled, but I seen white shirt pulling somebody out. Then that's when they proceeded to walk kind of up saying- the highway. The guy but in the white five guys. shirt. Right. The guy in the white shirt who we saw get out of the Lambo, you're saying he walked over to the Corvette and got somebody the out of the Corvette. They was pulling somebody out of the Corvette out the driver's side, yes. But you couldn't see who it was. Nope. Because I was on the other side of the highway, so I didn't but I seen in the mirror like him pulling, but I can't tell you, you know, who who pulled who he pulled out. How quickly did they all just leave? They left immediately. I'm talking about like once they was able to jump out the car and pull him, they they started trying. They started walking. They went there for like they weren't even there for like two minutes. They left immediately. Now, now, again, we have to stress that that Rasheed Rice has not been formally accused of anything. These are all just strictly allegations and, th- and things like this. But I will say that we have seen Rasheed Rice in a black sports car before. Uh, you'll recall when he was being sent off to the Super Bowl, his neighbors kind of threw him a little going away party or whatever you want to call it in his neighborhood. And you could see he had a sports car that looks similar to the one we see in the video here. Uh, again, not accused of anything yet. He hasn't been arrested, hasn't turned himself in. Nothing, nothing, no allegations against him at this point outside of his car may have been involved in this uh we'll obviously keep you uh, updated on all the things going forward with this uh, as we as we learn about them coming up next on tmz sports russell westbrook gets into a heated altercation with a fan watch the footage next on tmz sports Welcome back to TMZ Sports, the team of Mojo Butati and Edward Lewis coming in hot, talking about a fight. It's time to talk about a fight between Russell Westbrook and a fan, except this one had no physicality, just the war of the words. Right, Ed? Stop me if you heard this before. Russell Westbrook uh, in another altercation with a heckler. This time it happened when the Clippers were visiting the Hornets in Charlotte. Somebody apparently began spouting things to Russell Westbrook over the first half. Then during halftime, Westbrook confronted him. And we have video of it. Take a look. Stop me if you've heard it before. I should have just stopped you right then and there. I mean, if I'm a hardcore fan and I'm going to see Russell Westbrook play as a fan of the opposite team, I mean, I feel like I would probably heckle him and go after him every single game, right? Because I know I'm going to get exactly what I want. I'm, I'm going to get a response from him in one way, shape, or form. I'm, I'm probably going to get my five seconds of fame. Maybe I'm going to uh, be able to get him off of his game. Or maybe that's what Russ wants. Maybe he likes the altercations. Maybe he thinks it uh, escalates his game and gets his mind to where he needs to be able to go out there and fight on a court. But yeah, there's absolutely a theme here, Ed Board. This is not something that is a unique occurrence or happens. But at the same time, too, you know, as much as we're having fun right now, he hasn't really done anything wrong, right? Someone wants to talk trash. I mean, he's technically entitled to say what he wants back. He didn't throw anything at this guy. There was no physicality. He didn't lay a finger on him. I'm, he's chirping back. I mean, no harm, no foul, right? All right, Edward, moving right along. We actually have some really tragic news involving the passing of a former NFL star. Uh, Edward Lewis, you got the details. Yeah, Vontae Davis, uh, the two-time Pro Bowler, the, the, the great defensive back who played for the Dolphins, Colts, and Bills, uh, was found dead at the age of 35 on Monday. Uh, uh, we don't know many details at all. Uh, we simply know that the home he was found in, it belonged to his grandmother, uh, and we know that it was in Southwest Ranches, Florida, uh, which is around 30 miles north of Miami. Uh, we do know, though, that police don't suspect foul play was involved, uh, but again, they're still investigating. Uh, uh, obviously, just a horrific news. I mean, he's only 35 years old and last played in the NFL in 2018. Uh, All of his former teams have sent their condolences to him and his family, uh, including the Dolphins, Colts, and Bills. Even Jim Ursay uh, tweeted out his condolences. So just a sad story, Mojo. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, I never really got to spend much time with Vontae. I I was a friend, a a teammate, actually, of his older brother, Vernon Davis. Uh, But I 
knew all about Vante from back in the high school days. You know, I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area, uh, the Davis brothers being Maryland guys, of course. Vante was just a monster, an incredible, incredible player, one that you knew was going to make it to the big time, even as early as high school. And those things aren't always the easiest to uh, predict. I mean, here's a guy that was a two-time Pro Bowler, 22 career inter interceptions, made over $50 million in his NFL career. I mean, again, like I said, this guy was a beast. And, you know, again, I didn't get to know Vontae very well, but knowing his brother Vernon just being one of the friendliest guys you'll ever meet, one of the most fun, uh, just an athletic phenom. You know, you heard the same things about Vontae, just a tremendous person. And this is just absolutely sad news very devastating uh prayers up for all the family members and, and friends involved everyone that got to know vante closely and you know um, good to hear that there was no foul play suspected here but man what an unfortunate tragic incident coming up next on tmz sports we have a baseball brawl as padres and giants fans break it down in the concourse at a game Back-to-back -back nights, actually. Watch the footage next on TMZ Sports. Welcome back to TMZ Sports with the team of Mojo Mutati and Edward Lewis. Fellas, before the commercial break, we talked about a fight involving Russell Westbrook and a fan that involved zero physicality. Well, let's talk about a fight that had a lot of physicality uh, between fans. Edward, you got the details. Break down this brawl. Yeah, so the Giants and Padres kicked off their opening day weekend in San Diego, and apparently their fans could just not keep their hands off of each other. Uh, specifically on Saturday evening uh, during the game at Petco Park, a couple fans got into an all-out fist fight in one of the concourses, uh, and it's bananas. Take a look at this. Hey. Obviously super violent. We reached out to cops to see if there were any sort of injuries or even arrests made, but so far we haven't heard back yet. But believe it or not, this was not the only incidence of violence uh, at Petco Park this weekend during the four game series, because on Friday night, uh, uh, two other Giants fans got in a little bit of a tiff with another Padres fan, including that, that featured a woman slapping him before he pushed her. So, Mojo, I, we know this is a rivalry. We know the Giants and Padres don't like each other. We know their fans don't like each other. But I haven't seen anything like this in back-to-back -back games in quite a while here. And uh, it's who knows? They're supposed to play each other a bunch more times this season. I think we can expect more going forward. Yeah, we're going to expect more security going forward. They Seriously. got that Cali heat going right now. Two in-state teams brawling it out um you know usually we see these fights in the stands you know they don't always make their way to the concourse where there's a lot more real estate to to fan out i think i saw some jujitsu there on the ground at some point uh i don't know if these four guys brawling here all knew each other if this was some sort of sort of tag match or something to put it into pro wrestling terms but those were some some vicious shots right there i mean these dudes got knocked clean on their faces after being dropped like that uh you know, not a lot of people rushing in. At, at least there's that. At least it was a little bit more controlled. It didn't turn into some 100-person brawl like we've seen in the past. But, uh, yeah, back-to-back -back nights. I mean, this is this is a lot of the lady slapping the guy, him shoving her back. I mean, look, these are probably people you're going to have to discipline going forward, all of them, right? I mean, who's, who's to say they don't go back to the next games and, and do this again? Um, you know, I think we've talked about this tons of times. You, you got to discipline these people. There's got to be, you know, consequences to your actions if you're going to be attending family outings like this and, and fighting and brawl and just no place for that in the game. And, and, and these were not great. Coming up next on TMZ Sports, NC State star DJ Burns savagely trolls Duke after advancing to the Final Four. Check out the hilarious footage next on TMZ Sports.
Want to listen to today's show? Now you can check us out on the go with the all-new TMZ Sports Podcast wherever you get your podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen. Where as always, tomorrow's show will be the best show since Saturday! This is an image for you. A big ladder. I was about to say, yeah, unless you're ladder. Jack Eady. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 First time I've seen that. <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen anybody do that. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Uh, a big fella. Good thing he gave up hockey. Oh. Send it a message. Yeah, I think that was a good, that was a good, that was a good decision. Move. Real give good up, call. Give up hockey. Uh, who knows? Could have revolutionized the sport, Chuck. He'd be a hell of a no. goalie. Baseball, too. Could you imagine facing him standing on the mound, throwing mm. downhill like <laughs> He's stepping at you. He's like, Welcome back to TMZ Sports, the team of Mojo Mutati and Edward Lewis. Ed, that was Purdue Center. Zach Eady standing at seven foot four, last year's college basketball player of the year, cutting down the net without having to use a ladder, standing on his own two feet. You heard commentary. Don't know the last time we've ever seen that. If ever just an absolutely insane thing to see after a huge win against two seed tennessee a huge matchup coming up in the next round against nc state and dj burns who had a little weekend of his own right ed yeah i mean after he lit up duke for 29 points he was able to talk a little trash to the Blue Devils. Obviously, we know DJ Burns. If you're not familiar, he's the superstar on, on the Wolfpack. He's been killing it the whole tournament. But he gets a lot of hate from fans. You know, he's a big man, and, and a lot of people make fun of him, and he's spoken openly about it. But after he beat Duke, check this out. He got some revenge. <laughs> Mojo, watching him versus Edie in the Final Four is going to be must-see TV. I cannot wait for that game. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed that that's happening in the Final Four and, and not in the final itself. I mean, that would have been a sight to see. For anyone that's thinking this uh, trash talk might have been a little unprompted, a little backstory here, this was the third time that Duke and NC State have met this season. They split victories earlier on with NC State actually putting Duke out of the championship tournament so there's a little bit of history this season here and my goodness what a game i mean i i watched every second of this game as a former acc guy myself that used to play against both these teams at least in football not basketball dj burns was totally unstoppable i mean looking at sh like shack out there just tossing human beings around i think they list him at 275 pounds i mean this dude was playing like he was well over 300 pounds, just dominated the game. So going up against Zach Eady, my goodness, this is going to be so exciting. Of course, a huge height advantage for Eady, but overall, maybe a size advantage for Burns just being such a bigger player. Um, look, a little bit of trash talk here. It was fun to see him taunt the fans, but that post-game interview just came across as as such a sweet person, just seemed like what a nice guy, you know, maybe not expecting that with how you see him playing on a court because he's such a savage. But either way, I think the entire country is going to be thrilled watching this game. I, I can't wait for it. All right, and moving right along, we have a former NFL coach blowing off some serious steam after a long season. Ed, who is it? Yeah, Mike Vrabel, uh, fresh off his Tennessee Titans firing, uh, now has a lot more free time on his hands, obviously, and he's spending some of it in Las Vegas. We were able to obtain two photos of former Titans head coach at the win in Las Vegas, hitting a, a craps table. It's unclear how he did, uh, but the tipster told us that he didn't appear to be winning much, and that's why you can see perhaps on his face, it doesn't look like he's the happiest man in the world. Uh, we were told that he was drinking an ice down beverage and you know did appear, like you said, Mojo, to be blowing off some steam. Uh, however, he won't have 
uh, too long before he has to, you know, put down the gambling habit. He did sign with the Browns to be a consultant this season. So while he won't be a head coach, uh, he is going to be active in the NFL still this upcoming season. And I'm not sure he was blowing off any steam. I think he was building up more steam. Can we go back <laughs> to that look of disappointment on his face? I mean, this is the look of a man who lost a bunch and then lost some more. And he's just completely devastated with how his day has gone. I mean, obviously variables made a lot of money in his day. So financially, I don't think he's hurting right now. It's just more the disappointment of being a loser for the day, which for any competitor is a tough pill uh, to swallow. I'm not surprised he was playing craps, though. I mean, I initially would have wondered what Mike Vrabel's game of choice would have been. You know, maybe some roulette, maybe some blackjack. What would it be? Perhaps a high excitement, high energy driven game. I mean, and that's how he played on the field and that's how he coached. So I think this was a perfect fit, even though it seems like he's not very good at it. All right, that'll do it for us today on TMZ Sports. But before we go, actually breaking news as we are sitting here filming TMZ Sports right now, we have just received a statement from Rasheed Rice and his team. Edward, you got it. Yeah, Rice's lawyer, uh, Royce West, just released a statement. It says, on behalf of Rasheed Rice, his thoughts are with everyone impacted by the automobile accident on Saturday. Rasheed is cooperating with local authorities and will take all necessary steps to address the situation responsibly. That's it. Uh, that's what. <laughs> that's where he's going from here. And uh, so that he's broken the silence on it. Still, no. Obviously, it doesn't tell us too much about what's going on with him and them. But he he is at least acknowledging that he's cooperating. About as vague of a statement as we can possibly get here, Ed. No acknowledgement if it was him in the car, if someone borrowed his car. Um, so I guess stay tuned. Uh, tomorrow we should have a lot more information on this, maybe some big updates. And I think that should make tomorrow the best show since today. I'm a lawyer.